Well, hey again, guys. Today I'm going to be putting a seven pin trailer plug on my big uh, 18,000 pound trailer that I used to tow my tractor around on and everything. I used it the other day to tow, a tractor over, tow my tractor over to my friend's place to scrape his driveway. And I got about halfway there and I got the, the uh, message that my uh, disc, the trailer had disconnected itself from the electrically, not mechanically, and the lights weren't working. I got out and shoved the plug back in as tight as I could and I went about two feet and it did it again. So I figured the plug was probably bad. The trailer was about 20 years old, so I was assuming the plug was bad. When I got back home, I disassembled the plug and I found here that you can see a lot of rust and corrosion there on the plug. So I said, well, it's time to get it replaced. The pins are kind of oxidized in here where it goes, plugs into the truck. So I said, it's, you know, an easy enough thing to fix. So I bought, uh, I found this on Amazon, actually, a pretty good plug. I like it because it had this big gland nut on the back to where it fits on the cable very well and makes it watertight. It's a good solid connector and uh, it's got, you know, some good connections in here. I'm going to put uh, stake on connections in here rather than just stick the wire in there. I'll show that in a few minutes. But got good brass, copper colored connectors in there. I think it'll be a, a good connector. So when I got ready to change it yesterday, I cut this one off, I didn't cut it off, I disconnected it. And as you can see, the wires here that were in there are black and oxidized and discolored. Well, not a big deal, I'll strip them back. Well, I went back, and I'll show you on this brown wire. I stripped it back about two inches, and you can see it's still black all the way down. I cut it back about four inches, and it's still black there. So rather than keep chasing the corroded wire, I said, well, I'm just going to get some new cable. So again, I found this on Amazon. This is seven pin, seven conductor trailer wire. What I like about this is it's all copper. It's not copper clad aluminum, which you really don't want. But what is interesting about it is the two main conductors, the ground and the brake conductor, which are the ground is a white and the brake is blue, are 12 gauge wires. And the remaining wires for the lights and such are 14 gauge wires. So I like that, even though the brakes only draw about 8 amps, which is well within the current cap carrying capability of the 14 gauge wire, I just like having the heavier gauge wire for the brakes. And of course, having the common ground, if all the lights and the brakes are on, all that current's still flowing back on the negative uh, on the ground connection, so I wanted that to be a heavy connection too. So I decided to go ahead with the, that particular cable brand. I was able to find it in just a 10 foot length, which is all I need. It goes back, I have a junction box where then it spreads out around the rest of the trailer. So this is what I'm gonna use. Now when putting this on, it's very important to put the, the uh, gland nut on first. Not a big deal if I forget it on this, I have the other end of the wire open, so I could slide it on from the back end. But on this one, we want to be sure to put the gland nut on first. And we'll slide that back out of our way. And we put the shell of the connector on. And like I said, this is a good heavy-duty connector. It's got an Allen screw here to hold the plug part in there. We'll get that out of the way. Now I'm going to strip back these wires. And again, I'm lazy. I'm going to use my automatic wire stripper here. I'm going to be using stake-on connectors. And I made another video of these a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to be putting these stake-ons on here, and I'm going to strip it back about three-eighths of an inch and put them on and crimp them on for you. And I used a proper uh, gauge stripper there. And again, when you put these on, I'm using the ones made for 14-gauge wire, and you want to be able to see the wire in the connector. I'm using the proper stake on pliers. Again, these are Klein pliers. Remember the seam is here on the top and I want the rounded part of my stake ons to be to that seam. So I put these on here. Give it a good crimp. And that's good. I'm gonna slip a piece of heat shrink on here as well. I'm using some what they call quarter inch heat shrink. It'll slip over here and I'm going to shrink it back to about right there. 
I'll put that on the rest of them as I go along, get these out of the way. The uh, One of the things that I did before I went to check this, they give you this handy dandy little color code here with the plug, but not knowing who owned this trailer before me, I'm not sure they used the color code. So I checked it against this and I also used a 12 volt power supply and connected it up to the different colored wires and saw which lights came on and when the brakes engaged and whatnot. And it corresponded. So actually the color code here is correct, which is, that's a good thing. So the yellow, as I see here, is for the left turn signal and brake light. The green I just did is for the right turn signal and green light. The blue, as I mentioned, is for the brake. The brown, let me look here on my thing here, is for the running lights. White is the ground. And on mine, the red and the black were unused. But there is a connection called auxiliary power, which is which is hot with 12 volts when your car or truck is on. So I'm going to connect the black to that, which is by the color code. And I think in the future I may use that to help charge up my auxiliary brake battery, just to keep a little well of a trickle charge on it when I'm doing when I'm riding down the road. Not necessary. I'm going to have to put a diode in there so they won't back feed into my car, but not a big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and finish stripping these out and putting the stake ons on here. I prefer using the stake ons rather than just sticking the wire under these little metal pieces here because I can get a better crimp. And I can put the heat shrink on there to help seal it up from the elements. And no matter how hard you try to seal it up, driving down the road at 60 miles an hour with water beating on it, some water is going to get in there eventually. So I just want to try to mitigate that as much as I can for as long as I can. Strip this back just a little bit more. And again, I'm using the correct color stake on. Blue is for 14 gauge wire, and this is 14 gauge wire. I'll do the 12 gauge ones last. I'm not going to use the red one, so I only need to put a stake on here on the black one. Okay, so now I'll do the black and the, I mean the red, white and the blue for the brake and the ground. Again, I'll use the 12 gauge stripping portion here. And these stake ons are for 12 or 10 gauge. They fit in there well for that. And again, the seam is at the top. Well, that wasn't good. Stake on actually came out of there. Well, I'll just get another one here. You see me flip my pliers over. I had it in the wrong orientation. Still got it in the wrong orientation. There we go. Blue wire here. I'll look for another stake on here for a 10 gauge, 12 gauge. Oh, 
Yeah, I'm going to slip this piece of heat shrink over the wire here first. I don't think it's going to fit over the stake on. did it too. What am I doing wrong here? I think I'm getting too close to the edge when I crimp. Nope. I don't know, maybe something's up with these stake ons. I'm not going to use the the insulator on it. And that way, I'm going to use heat shrink anyway. So it should be fine. much better and I'll be able to put the heat shrink up there just like that. Now I was concerned about the heat shrink fitting over this. Yeah it's not going to go over that. I'll have to get a bigger piece of heat shrink for that. I'll put the heat shrink on all of these. This is a little overkill, but that's my middle name basically, over engineer, overkill. Let me get a bigger piece of heat shrink to go over that. This is a piece of 3AT shrink. It'll go over that. I'll cut it back about an inch and a half. And I'm going to shorten up this piece of red just a little bit so it's out of my way. And I should be able to use the heat gun and start shrink these guys down. A little short on that one piece of 12 gauge that slipped down so I'm going to put another piece of heat shrink right over top of it. It's not going to hurt anything. I'll catch that a little better. Okay, those are shrunk in there pretty well. It should be good and watertight.
So again, I've got my gland nut and the shell in there. So I can start putting these cables on here. Now since they already have these little clamps on it, I'm going to have to take these clamps off so that I can get the ring connectors on there. And I'm using ring connectors rather than fork connectors because I don't want them to come off. If, if uh, a fork connector gets loose and there's any tension on the wire, it certainly can fall right out. These are the little, little pieces of metal I'm talking about. They just kind of crimp the wire down between this and that when you tighten the screw. And I prefer using the stake on. Let me get all of those out of here. The center conductor on this plug won't be used at all. That's for backup lights and on my trailer since it's a kind of a low boy trailer it doesn't have backup lights so I don't need to utilize that one. That's when the uh, red wire would be used I assume. Hey, when I took this off I showed you I drew a little diagram. I'm kind of old school on that. I also took a picture with a cell phone to compare it with the diagram. But like I said, this matches up with the diagram that they gave me and the color code. So I matched the color code here. There are colors written embossed on the connector here, and they do match up with the wires. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on just like, just like the colors require. Now I am going to turn these stake-ons so that they are flush and not sticking out against the, the shell of the connector. I'm going to start with a blue one for no no really good reason. I get it to go in there. Probably should use a magnetic screwdriver, but we we'll use what I have here. I'll get them pretty snug, but then I'll come back and double check them all. Okay, that was the blue. The white one goes over here next to it. Spin that around and get it in position. I measured before I stripped this wire back. I used the tape measure here. And I stuck it through the connector, body of the connector, to measure how much to strip back here so that I knew I would have the correct amount. Otherwise, I may have to shorten it up or something, which I don't want to do. Especially after you put your connectors on. green one goes over here on this side. It would be nice if they laid the conductors in the cable in the same orientation as they need to be in the plug, but no such luck. Feed the black through here. Now 
and that leaves just the brown and the red here doesn't get used at all so it kind of lays in the middle get these laid in here as neatly as possible. And I'm going to go around and snug them all up good and tight. So they're all good. Now I'm going to just take and wrap, wrap a tape around here as another further measure. Try to keep water off of those connections. Totally unnecessary. But I like doing it. I'm going to pull it pretty good and tight. This is Scotch 33. Everybody that's ever done any work on an electrical system knows what Scotch 33 is. A whole lot better than just the generic stuff you buy at the big box store. Of course, you can get Scotch 33 at the big box store, but it's a little more expensive, but it, it's worth it. Okay, so those are on there pretty well. Should be able to slide the shell up on here. Shell goes in that way. There's a little Allen screw to hold the connector into the shell Not too tight there you go now we'll put the gland nut on here and that threads on here Probably need a pair of pliers to tighten that up. Got a gasket on there to help keep water from coming in there. Let me get a pair of channel locks to tighten that up. Now just tighten this gland nut. It's got a little rubber. Let me show you. It's got some fingers in here. And it's got a little rubber gasket. And when you squeeze this down, it's tapered. It squeezes that down and makes a waterproof, waterproof connection. I've always called them gland nuts. That's probably a proper name for them. But... Good and tight. And you can see the gasket's compressed around the cable there. So that's that's how that works. That should be a good long-lasting connection. And I'll be able to splice this into my trailer. It's raining outside today, so I'm definitely not going to be working outside on that today. But anyway, I wanted to show you guys how I made this connector plug up here. And it worked out pretty good. So... Like and subscribe to my channel if you would, please. I've got a lot more stuff that I want to show you.